Hi guys, my name is Crystal Clay. I'm the senior aquarist here at the Estuarium at the Dolphin Island Sea Lab. And today I'm going to be talking to you about horseshoe crabs and promotion of the International Horseshoe Crab Day, which will be June 20th. So look back, check back with us. We'll be posting more information about that later on. But these are our Atlantic horseshoe crabs we have here. Two of our females we have in our touch tank. Um, these are not fully grown females. They are juveniles, babies. Um, they reach full grown size around 10 years of age and they live for about 20 to 40 years. When they reach full grown size, they'll be about double the size they are now. They'll be about 10 inches wide and about two feet long. So they get quite bigger. As right now, you can see with my hand, they are quite small right now. They're incredibly docile creatures. They, are, they cannot hurt you at all. They look scarier than they are, but completely harmless. And so do their claws pinch at all? No. Um, so how hard a crab can pinch depends on what it eats. So these guys eat worms and um, dead things or scavengers, so they don't want to pinch very hard. So as you see, she doesn't hurt at all. And then where is her mouth located? It's going to be right here in the center where all those little hairs are. So they don't have any teeth. Now when people see the crab, what she's doing with her tail right now, is she trying to attack you or what is she trying to do? So she's trying to flip over. So if I let her go and let her lay on her back, she'll use this tail to kind of help push herself over and back upright. So when you say docile, these creatures aren't out to hurt us in any way, shape, or form. No, they are not. Um, they just kind of exist to clean up the ocean for us. Since they are scavengers, they do clean up everything, all the dead fish and waste in the ocean for us. For that reason also, they have no natural predators. No one actively hunts after them for that reason. So where is their usual habitat? Where can we find these guys in the world? Um, for the guys we have here, the Atlantics, they're found all the way up the eastern seaboard, all the way through the Gulf. Um, they like brackish, mar um, brackish water, but they can be found up to 35 miles offshore, up to 660 feet deep. So they have a very wide range. And when you say what kind of water do they like, Alice and Edwin, eight and six, were asking. So you said brackish water. Do they like fresh water, salt water? Salt water and brackish water. So brackish water is where salt water and fresh water mixes. So it's kind of a little muddier sometimes. And also it's not as salty as the ocean can be, as true salt water. But they can stand up to pure salt water. Are they only found in the United States? No, there are actually four different species of horseshoe crabs. Only the Atlantic is found in the United States is only found on the eastern um, side of the United States. But there are three species found in the Indo-Pacific that look almost exactly the same, but get a little bit smaller. How small can they get in the Indo-Pacific? A um, little bit bigger than she is, about the size of this uh, molt we have right here. So that's when, smallest for adult. When you say molt, what does that mean? So how do they grow? So they molt like a snake sheds its skin. So when they molt, they will shed the outer hard layer, and so then the soft body inside will walk out the front of their shell around this plate right here. They'll open up, they'll walk right out. They'll grow to almost twice the size of this, re-harden, and grow again. So for them, as opposed to having bones on the inside, they have a hard plate on the outside to protect them. And where are their eyes located? So let me grab one of these girls to show you. So they actually have 10 eyes. So they have the two compound eyes that you can see really well right here, and then they have eight other eyes that act as kind of photoreceptors, light receptors. So they have three right here, one right on top of each of the compound eyes, a set of ones on their tails that act as one eye together, which are really hard to see. They're going to be, if you can see on her a little bit better, they're going to be all those little black dots down the tail. Those are photoreceptors that act all as one eye together. And then they have two eyes underneath, which she's going to be calm. You can see those two little brown dots between those front claws. Hopefully you can see them. She's a little feisty. <laughs> Let's see if she'll be a little calmer. Yeah, she's a little calmer. You can see them really well right there. So they have two eyes underneath as well. Wow, so they can see definitely see all the way around. Yep, but with the, their very rudimentary eyes, so they can't see any color, but they also can't really see a lot of depth. So, very basic eyes. Trip, who's five, wants to know how big can horseshoe crabs get? So for ours, the girls get bigger than the boys. So the, uh, the molt I have is as big as a boy can get, but a girl can get about 10 inches wide and about two feet long. 
and weigh up to 11 pounds. Hi, big. I would like to know how long these crabs have been around. So how long have horseshoe crabs not necessarily been here, but how long have they been found in the world? As a species, they have been around for over 450 million years. So they've been around on the planet longer than dinosaurs have. Whatever, here. Parker, who's 11, says, I've seen a video of the crabs on top of each other. Is that true? And we'll sometimes see that out in the stingray tank where they look like they're kind of traveling together. Yeah, so that's, you're going to see on the males, these two are girls, but on the boys, they have these specialized claws. They call them boxing glove claws. So they'll use these claws to grab onto the back part of a female shell. And when it's um, time, when it's uh, springtime, they'll go up onto the beach. The female will dig her nest to lay her eggs and drag the male over to fertilize the eggs. So they'll grab on in preparation for, for mating season. Rowan, who's seven, asks, why are they called horseshoe crabs? They get that name because their shell looks like a horseshoe shape, like what you find on the bottom of a horse. Um, and Anna asks, why are the females bigger? Is there any idea on that? It probably has to do with the fact that they have to carry the boy onto land for, um, for the mating purposes, so it probably helps being bigger to help pull that extra weight along. Is there a way to tell how old these females are, or even the males? There's not a way to tell. They quit growing at the age of 10, so we know that this molt came from a male that was probably around the age of 10 when he molted for the last time. Um, for these girls, we know they're under the age of 10 because they haven't reached full grown size yet. Um, this girl over here, we've had her for the last five years. So she's probably about a little over five, maybe six years old. Uh, Lindsay, who's six, says, I know their blood is blue, but why? What's the importance of their blood? So their blood is blue, um, as opposed to our blood, which is red. Their blood is blue because theirs is copper-based, while ours is iron-based. So their blood is, um, being copper-based, allows it to clot if they get sick with a bacterial infection. So they don't get sick from that. So we use their blood in medical research to test out new um, medicines to make sure that they are not contaminated with bacteria. Very interesting. How long can their tails get? Is this about as long as they... When they um, molt, do their tails get longer too? Their tails do get longer too. So you'll see with this molt, his tail is much longer than hers is because he's much bigger. It's actually broken on the end here. Um, but there's one species in, in, in the Indo-Pacific that can get about 13, 14 inches long, and most of that is just tail. Their tail actually is as long as their body is. So they can't poke you or anything with their tail? No. That is not meant to hurt in any way, shape, or form. No, this only is here for mostly kind of, as you see, kind of guiding them through the water, but also to flip themselves over if they end up on their back. Rowan, who's seven, asks, how often do they molt? They molt, it changes. So when they're younger, they molt much quicker. They'll molt roughly every couple weeks. But when they get older, it might be every couple of years until once they reach the age of 10, these guys actually stop molting and they stay that size for the next 10 to 30 years. And so, yeah, what is their lifespan? 20 to 40 years. And does it depend on where they live for their lifespan, like the Indo-Pacific compared to the Atlantic ones? The Indo-Pacific do have a little bit longer. They tend to be closer to the 30, 40 range, while the ones here tend to be closer to the 20, 30 range. And I know we talked about it already, but Avery, who's joining us, wanted to know where do they live? Where do they live? They live mostly in the brackish water, but they can be found up to 35 miles offshore. So they like kind of around here, like our beaches around here where it's nice brackish water. Great for finding food. And are they bottom dwellers? So do they mainly stay on the bottom? Yeah, as you see them here, they don't really move off top. They're not really meant for swimming. They don't really have the, I mean, with these claws, these are meant more for walking. They're not really swimming claws. And these claws back here are specialized to push the sand as they move forward. So Trip, who's five hours, how fast a horseshoe crab can swim. They don't swim, they walk. Yeah. So do we know how fast they can walk? Nah, I don't know the exact speed, but I know if we put food in there, they can move really fast. <laughs> I mean, if you see her, she's cruising around pretty quickly. Oh yeah, they go where they want to go when they want to go there, don't they? Yep. But as I said, eyesight's not great, so they don't understand the walls sometimes. If their eyesight isn't good, do they have noses? They don't really have noses in the traditional sense, they more of taste their feet. So as they walk around, they're constantly tasting the sand to see if it's food or not. 
So when I'm picking up and I'm holding her and I'm touching her, she's tasting me to see if I'm food. Uh, Clint asks, do they live in the marsh that's near the sea lab? I don't know if they live in the marsh, but they, the west end we've seen them. Yeah, we've seen them on the west end, especially on the um, bay side of the west end beach. They tend to like that side a little bit better. It's a little calmer. And do they like calm water or is it rough water? They tend to do better in calmer water because it is really easy for them to get flipped over and then get stuck on their back. So you tend to find them a lot more where it's calmer in bay situations. Um, and Anna's asking, where is the mouth? And as we look at the mouth again, can you tell me what you feed here. these guys? So here's the mouth on this one just because it's not moving. You see this right in the middle right there is where their mouth is. So it's going to be those little hairs are the only thing they have. So they don't have teeth. Um, we feed these guys a variety of different fish, squid, um, krill, shrimp. Since they're not picky, since they are a scavenger um, type of animal, they'll eat anything we kind of give them. Um, Abby, who's eight, asks, how hard is their shell? How hard? I mean, it's for this one to be a molt, you can hear it's got a nice, nice thickness to it. It's enough to keep any most predators from being able to try to eat them. So nobody can really get a grab on them. Yeah, especially because it's very smooth. There's not really a good way to try to grab that from the top if you're a fish. Well, any, what's your favorite thing about the horseshoe crab as you care for these guys all the time? Hmm just how sweet they are and how they look very terrifying just because they've been around for so long. So they look really weird and scary, but when you consider that they're, as a species, 450 million years old and everything else looked like them, it's impressive that they haven't changed for that long. So Carissa, as we wrap up, I wanted to answer a question from earlier. So these guys over here are hermit crabs? Yep. And then over on the other side, we have, what is this guy? This is a Florida horse conch. It's a type of snail. He's still hiding in his shell right now. <laughs> and we'll talk about the horse conch at some point. Um, our last question comes from Maddie. How can you tell a male and the female apart? So one way is size when they're fully grown, because males don't get bigger than this, but females will get twice their size. The other way is with the claws. So only boys have these front boxing glove claws, because they need those to grab onto the female shell to go onto the beach for mating. But females, if you see, will only have claws just like all the rest of them. So they don't have those big boxing glove claws. Well, thank you. Um, let, let's hit one more. Mandy asks, oh, um, what are the rough edges on the back? So these little, they're not quite spines. They're not meant to hurt. They're just meant to keep things from going out underneath the shell right there. Okay, so that's the... Um, if they get flipped over, will predators imminently try to eat them? So if they're over on the beach, can somebody eat them? Um, if they're upside down, they are vulnerable in that position, um, but they don't really have any natural predators, but a few other scavengers might try to take advantage of the fact that they're upside down for too long. So if you ever see one upside down on the beach and it's still alive, you can tell they'll move, they'll, they will smell fresh. Um, flip them back over because sometimes when they're up on the dry beach they have they struggle to get back over since the sand is softer so if you just flip them back over they'll go right back on their way back into the water so definitely help these guys if we see them yep well Carissa thank you so much for your time this morning and horseshoe crabs which um, Barbara says is her favorite and I think is our favorite too oh, yeah. um, and when we get the chance to have y'all back here, you can come visit these guys at any point. And on Wednesday, we're going to talk to Elizabeth Heave about the Manatee Sighting Network.